one of the reasons why I keep coming back to Penang is that I just love the old heritage buildings here. And I've stayed in many different places, in many different hotels throughout the years when I visited. But one of them and only one of them stands out as my all-time favorite. Hey you and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today we are moving to Leaf Street and I'm going to check into the Blue Mansion. And this will be my third stay at the Jung Fat Ji Mansion. And the last time I was here as a guest, let me see, it was in the year of 2006. Wow, I can't believe it has been that long ago. My memory can sometimes be a little bit fuzzy, but I definitely can recall that on the previous occasions, I've stayed in Batavia and also there's another room which is called The Fragrant Poem. Okay, I've got the key and I'm very excited to check out this room I'm allocated today. And this one here is called The Old Scholar. Come on in, let's have a little look around. Oh my gosh, I'm really impressed. Quite a big space, quite a big living space all together, as you can see. Well, the rooms in Jung Fat Ti Mansion are, well, kind of like little museums by themselves with furniture and also artworks inherited from the family of Jung Fat Ti. It's the little attention to detail that matters. And as you walk into your room for the very first time, you'll notice that they have already switched on the television for you and you'll hear very light classical instrumental oriental music playing in the background. And that puts you in the mood for another time, another period. I just love the grandeur of the Jung Fat Ti Mansion. It's a little bit like spending a night in a museum. Or if you want to put it another way, it's like being invited to stay over at the house of your very rich distant uncle. Okay, at this stage, I must say that I'm very happy with the bedroom and also the living area of the old scholar. That's the name of this room here. And it's time to have a quick look in the bathroom. This may be a period house and the owners have gone through great extent to restore this building so lovingly and tried as hard as they could to maintain as much of the structure and also the feature of the Jung Fat Ti Mansion. But when it comes to the bathroom, don't worry, you have all the mod cons here. I'm very happy with the bathroom, it's got all I need and mainly that's a really good water pressure and also proper hot water. Ooh, look at these, they're so pretty. Containers for the body soap and also shampoo and conditioner. I wonder if they sell these at the gift shop. And there you go, the bathroom is very functional with little charming features and it's also quite generous in size. And do excuse me, that's the reason why I seem to be spending a little bit more time in this bathroom. And we will take a wonder to the exterior soon and you will be really impressed all together, I promise you. Unlike a conventional boring hotel, well, each room at the Jung Fat Ti Mansion carries a name rather than a number, like this one here, which is the Old Scholar. And with each name, there is a story behind it. It was a well-known fact that Jung Fat Ti placed great importance on book learning and despite coming from Rex to Rich's background, he was always seeking to improve himself by reading. And his vision was a progressive outlook for China at that period of time and its dealing with the world. 
and he sent his own sons to be educated in westernized English medium schools. And he was also a very well-known philanthropist and he donated vast sums of money to educational institutions and the old scholar suite is named in honour of that memory. And now we step out from the bedroom and we are in the courtyard area. There are actually two sides of the courtyard, um, two wings to it if you may call it as such. You have the masculine side and the feminine side. This is very much in line with the Jomansi, the traditional Chinese feng shui. If you have arrived at this point of this vlog, and whether you are a Malaysian or otherwise, you might be wondering who on earth was this man, Mr. Jiang Fati. Well, he sounded as if that he's some kind of crazy rich Asian. Well, actually, he was. Well, big sigh there. Wouldn't it be nice if I could somewhat claim to be related to this Mr. Jiang? who was at one point in time in the 19th century known as the Rockefeller of the East. Mr. Jiang wasn't born with a silver spoon in his mouth and it was reported that um, even at one point in his life, he was working as a cow herd back in his village in Guangdong. And fast forward just a little bit, after the Second Opium War, the people in China were experiencing severe hardship and suffering and so many of them fled and Jiang Fati was one of them and he migrated to Southeast Asia together with other coastal Chinese families to seek their fortune. Jiang Fati was just one of the many, many new immigrants in Southeast Asia at that time but what set him apart was that he had the dream, he had the drive, and he had the tenacity. With a little bit of help from his father-in-law, lucky guy, he started off a trading company and slowly but surely, he ascended to great heights. Hmm, did I just mention his father-in-law? Well, actually, he had eight fathers-in-law because he married eight times. Well, that's not very uncommon for a man of his stature in that period in time. In this day and age, I'm sure most men would be quacking in their boots, thinking about handling more than one wife at a time. But Jiang Fati... He must have been a very brave man and of course his time management skills must have been the tops because, well, he had to fulfill his marital obligations to eight women. What a hero! The Blue Mansion wasn't the only mansion owned by Chong Fati and in fact he built well, quite a number of mansions across Indonesia, Hong Kong, China, Singapore, and here in Penang. And it was actually built as a home for his favorite wife, that's wife number seven. I read somewhere, I don't know whether it is true or not, but he was 70 years old when he married wife number 7 and she was 17 years old then. Hmm. Truth be told, I could go on and on and on about the history of Jiang Fati and the Blue Mansion but if you're really interested, you don't have to be a guest of the hotel you can come in the daytime and join one of the tours conducted and there's really a wealth of information to be had 
I did go on the in-house tour of the Blue Mansion twice when I was a house guest and that was many years ago and the one conducted by the then general manager Eric Farm it was so so good I mean Eric was such an articulated man and he was so passionate about the Blue Mansion its history and its heritage and he really brought the stories to life and hence I was really quite shocked to learn recently that Eric passed away in 2016 and it's really so sad to hear of it he was really part of the Blue Mansion in that particular should I say era One thing which is quite strange, I find, is that whenever I tell my friends and acquaintances that when I was in Penang, I stayed in this very old house, which is called Jong Vat Ti Mansion, my friends, even those who are from Penang, will ask me this question. Did I see any spirits in there? I think I owe it to my friends to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And the answer is yes, there are spirits in the Blue Mansion because right now they have their very own in-house bar which is located just next to the courtyard. I think I must have spent quite a bit of time here at the bar during my stay in the Blue Mansion imbuing myself with the spirits and do get to know the bartender his name is Ali and I'm sure he will fix you up with the Blue Mansion special cocktail which is called the Kwai Fei Lemongrass and it contains butterfly pea flower infused vodka you will have to excuse me if I'm sounding as if I'm doing a running advertisement on the Blue Mansion I'm not and this is not an advertisement and it so happens that I have to find a place to stay in. This is one of my all-time favourite places. It's part of my footy journey in Penang. I'm Gobble Guzzle and time for me to sign off on this particular vlog. Be kind always and spread peace and I'll catch up with you again real soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>